Now we're going to look at cardiac output. That's how much blood is pumped out of the heart every minute. But I'm going to divide this in actually into four videos instead of trying to do it all in one. It's just too long. So part one is going to look at how cardiac output is affected by heart rate and stroke volume. Stroke volume is how much blood is pumped out with each beat of the heart. And of course, heart rate is how many beats per minute. Then I'm going to turn in the next video to look at factors that affect what is called preload and afterload, which in turn affect stroke volume and therefore affect cardiac output. In the third video, we'll look at factors affecting contractility, which also affects stroke volume and therefore cardiac output. And then the last video, we'll look at the factors affecting heart rate. Again, that would affect cardiac output. So this one will just be an overview of the effects of heart rate and stroke volume on cardiac output. So let's first get some definitions in. And diastolic volume is the volume in the ventricles at the end of diastole. So in other words, right before the ventricles are ready to contract. So it's how full can we make those ventricles. And systolic volume is the volume in the ventricles at the end of systole. So basically after the ventricles have contracted and pushed all the blood or ejected as much blood as they can, this is how much blood is still in the ventricles. So it's kind of a residual volume was left in there. So stroke volume is basically the difference between those two values. That is how much blood do we eject with every stroke or every, every contraction of the ventricles. So if I have end diastolic volume, how full I make it, and and systolic volume is how much is left, then the difference between those two would have been how much I ejected from the ventricles when the ventricles contracted. Then there's a term called ejection fraction. This is the percent of the end diastolic volume represented by stroke volume. This is often a measure of how well the heart is functioning. That is, it's a weak heart or a strong heart. And you use it often in clinical terms. We won't be using it here though. And then cardiac output, as I mentioned before, is how much blood the heart pumps out every minute. So if I take the heart rate, which is how many beats per minute, and the stroke volume, how much blood is pumped out with every beat of the heart, I'm gonna have stroke, or excuse me, I'm gonna have cardiac output. So if I have 75 beats per minute as a heart rate, and every time the heart beats, I pump out 70 mils, then I take the two together, I pump out about 50 or 5,200 mils per minute, and that's over five liters of blood per minute, and that's our volume. That is how much blood we have actually. So we're actually pumping our entire volume of blood every minute. So the important thing to remember here is this equation down here: that cardiac output is going to equal heart rate times stroke volume. So if I either increase heart rate or stroke volume, I'm going to increase cardiac output. At the same time, if I lower heart rate or lower stroke volume, then I'm going to lower cardiac output. And that's where I want to look and see what factors affect heart rate and stroke volume and therefore affect cardiac output. Well, here are some of the factors that are come into play. I'm either going to affect stroke volume or I'm going to affect heart rate. I can affect stroke volume through preload. Preload is basically the end volumetric pressure that stretches the ventricles. So in a sense, if I have blood in the ventricles that stretch those muscles a little bit, it makes the muscle contract even stronger because I have better overlap of the myosin and actin myofilaments. So this idea of having a good big volume is going to end up affecting end diastolic volume. Afterload is the pressure that must be obtained or overcome um, from the ventricles or for the ventricles to eject blood. So in other words, I've got to push blood from the ventricles out into the arteries and the afterload is that pressure in the arteries that the ventricles have to overcome. And that's going to end up affecting um, end systolic volume because if I affect end systolic or if, if I can't pump as much blood out, then my end systolic volume is going to be higher. Then inotropy is refers to contractility. This is the how well does the muscles contract independent of muscle stretch. 
Preload is all about muscle stretch, lining up those myosin and actin myofilaments better so that they can um, form more cross bridges and contract. Contractility or inotropy has to do with calcium levels. If I have more calcium in the muscle cell, then I can form more cross bridges. More cross mean, bridges means better contractions. And so I increase inotropy and therefore increase stroke volume. And then I'm also, like I mentioned in the fourth video, I'll look at heart rate. Heart rate can also affect cardiac output. And so we'll see then how autonomic nervous system regulates heart rate and hormonal regulation of heart rate. That's going to end this little video, so it kind of ends up short. But then the, go to the next video, which will be talking about what factors affect preload and afterload and therefore stroke volume and cardiac output.